Welcome to DDLD 5303, Applying Educational Technology Portfolio. A short while ago, I was observing my oldest teenage son, Levi, who is an aspiring downhill mountain bike racer, work on his bike in preparation for a major bike race. I was reflecting on how he has grown from a young boy working on secondhand bikes worth a few hundred dollars to a young man finely tuning his $9,000 racing machine, his downhill bike, in hopes of finding that mechanical edge that would get him into the winner's circle on the winner's podium. The level of sophistication of his equipment and the sport of downhill racing requires an equally high level of proficiency and sophistication in the work that he's doing. I was beaming with pride when I realized that both he and his younger brother have learned how to learn and were able to apply knowledge from a variety of disciplines to solving very sophisticated challenges that they face in their racing and in life in general. My mind drifted back to a time when the words, Dad, it's just not working. Dad, there's got to be a better way, provided me an opportunity to take my boys along a reflective journey and a continual cycle of analysis, experimentation, application, and then more reflection and so on, forcing and requiring my young boys to continually use this reflective process and then document their learning through an e-portfolio meant that they had established the habit of deeper learning. It worked. I have to admit that they often didn't like having to do the e-portfolio, uh, but as I have them look at all the work they've done today, it's paid off. They've become lifelong learners who are prepared to take on any challenge. My oldest son has even written about how his e-portfolio has helped him get sponsored and how it helps him in his racing career. I too have maintained an e-portfolio since the late 90s because I believe that I cannot ask any of my learners to do something that I'm not willing to do myself. Furthermore, I believe in the benefits of using my e-portfolio for personal reflection and find that thinking about my thinking about thinking about learning is one of the most important ways to help me create the most effective learning environments for my learners. While all this anecdotal evidence of my experiences with my boys, my personal experiences may be heartwarming, I'm also an educational researcher, so I want to point to the fact that the research into learning portfolios or e-learning uh, has been going on for the past several decades, and the evidence to support my anecdotal experience uh, of deeper learning is adding up. For example, research conducted by Connect2, or the Catalyst for Learning, C2L, a national network of campus e-portfolio leaders working together to advance the transformation uh, capacities of e-portfolio for teaching, learning, and assessment has shown that effective learning portfolios or effective e-portfolio use can build student success, deepen student learning, and catalyze institutional change. The C2L research has also revealed that effective e-portfolios help students to connect and make meaningful uh, learning from otherwise isolated learning experiences. This deepens the inquiry process and helps students integrate their learning into a larger framework of development and purposeful self-authorship, often through reflective engagement with other students. Additional research from the National School Board's Association uh, Center for, uh, for Public Education back in 2013 noted that most educators training for PD uh, is simply ineffective, especially when it comes to learning technologies. Uh, the current sit and get model that is so prevalent in the short one-shot workshops does not change teacher practice, nor does it have an effect on student achievement. As any teacher will tell you, immediate and repeated application of newly acquired skills um, are required to solidify long-term habits of practice. Additional researchers like uh, Dee Parker confirms that the same dynamic applies to teacher technology skills. In contrast to what typically happens, uh, we are advocating a go-and-show model, uh, where a teacher is encouraged to go back to the classroom and show what they have learned. The process is not considered complete until the teacher has demonstrated mastery of training or mastery of learning by successful implementation in a live classroom and then showing that implementation through their e-portfolio. The e-portfolio uh, can be used as one of the tools or resources in the actual implementation process itself. The options are endless. The key is to start and to build your e-portfolio continually. In this course, we are asking you to simply start your e-portfolio using whatever e-portfolio tools you choose and whatever way you desire. Don't worry, we'll give you some guidelines on how to do this 
what tools to choose, and what you want to include. Uh, and we'll also point to useful resources that you can use to get started. Uh, we also don't want you to be too concerned about getting your ePortfolio perfect or right because your ePortfolio isn't about being right or wrong. It's about your learning and your experience. Perhaps one of the most important things we want you to remember as you go and show is that you own your own learning. You control your own learning and your ePortfolio in the same way we want you to own and control your own learning. We look forward to your success in your ePortfolio experiences.